Hey y'all, it's Katie. Welcome back to From My Vanity and welcome to a big old collab video. This is going to be a collab with four of my friends here on YouTube, so a five-way collab and we are doing an old-fashioned makeup swap. So Lauren from Little Blushing Birdie is actually the one that contacted everyone and got this whole group together. There's also Stephanie from Brighter Darling. She just started around the same time I did on her YouTube channel, but she's had a blog for a long time. Maria from Agape Love Girl. You guys have heard me talk about her plenty of times. I love her. And then also Kim. I believe her channel name is Kim Nizzolo. I'm a little newer to her. I actually discovered her through a collab she did with Samantha March. I think it was actually near Mother's Day. So yeah, those are the four ladies in this group. We've got Kim, Maria, Lauren, and Stephanie. And myself. So as I said, we're just going to be doing a old-fashioned makeup swap and basically we just uh, set a number for ourselves. We set $100 as kind of the budget and then we put everyone's name into a generator, mix it all up. I sent my products over to Maria, so if you want to see what I sent Maria, you can watch her video after this one. And then Kim sent a box of makeup to me, so I got all the products she sent along. We had said that we were going to try as best as we could to kind of give a complete face because this is going to be a chit chat get ready with me video. Um, I actually, a little confession here, I've actually already filmed this once, but it was a big disaster and a couple of the reasons was I was trying to do it during naps and my son Gideon's been going through this for, I think he's cutting a tooth, but his naps have only been like 30 minutes, so I was really stressed out filming it, trying to make sure I was like filming it fast enough to make sure I finished before he woke up. So I felt extremely stressed and extremely rushed through it. I was just a hot mess that day. So I was like, you know what, Katie? Like you're down here downstairs filming with lights anyway. You could just do this at night. I typically film upstairs on my makeup table in front of a couple of large windows, so I use natural light. I always film in the day. I've always filmed during their nap time. But it just kind of hit me. I was like, you know, I'm using lights already even during nap time because the lighting down here is terrible. I was like, why don't you just do it after you put the kids to bed? And then you could just kind of relax and take your time. But yeah, all that to say, I'm gonna be filming it again. And if you can't tell from the 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 time on this video, it's gonna be a long one. I'm gonna do my best to edit it down to around the 30 minute mark. But who knows, because as I said, kids are asleep. I don't have any kind of time commitments. My husband's away at work, he's working nights. I could talk all night, so we'll see how this goes. So I figured let's run through all the products that Kim sent me first, and then we'll get into the chit chat, get ready with me. But first off, Kim sent me an eye mask that I'm not gonna be able to try because it is an overnight mask, but it's the O2M Oxygen Eye Mask from B2, I believe is the brand name. There are ones you're supposed to wear all night for eight hours, so I'm gonna be putting these on tonight. I can go ahead and put it here on the screen and let you know what I thought. She also sent me a skin lotion, a skin perfecting lotion from Murad. It's a supposed to be a oil-free moisturizer that provides a shine-free hydration for blemish-prone skin, which sounds amazing for my skin. She did send me two little foundations, full size and a little sample. This one, the number seven, is actually one I already own and in the same color. So I'm not going to use this. I'll go ahead and give that to like one of my sisters. But then she also sent me the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Perfector. It's a blurring skin tint with sunscreen, which I was really intrigued at. So this is what we're going to be using for my foundation today. She also sent me this Hard Candy Glam Glamouflage mix in drops is a turn me matte. It's supposed to be you add a couple drops to transform whatever you're using, foundation you're using, to a matte formula. So I am going to be trying it with the, the skin tint. She also sent me this Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Marine Boosting Mist. It's supposed to be something you put on. Uh, before applying moisturizer. So I've got to remember to do that. I'm so bad at that. The palette she sent is the Bad Habit Arabesque Palette, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. Mascara, she sent me the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara, which I've been hearing really great things about. So I was excited that she sent that along. So she actually sent me three um, gel eyeliner products. One is a collab bold face liner that is in brown. She also sent me a white one from Maybelline Lasting Drama. And then she also sent me an Armor Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Goldmine. Don't know which one I'm going to use, so we'll see what eye look I end up doing, but I have three to choose from. And then for brows, she sent me the Jordana Fabio Brow Eyebrow Pencil in Dark Brown. Lashes? <laughs> Lashes. She sent me the Icon. Icon? I'm not very sure how to pronounce the brand, but Icon Lashes in High T. Wait till you guys see these lashes. I can't wait to see what you guys think when I put them on at the end because they were pretty big for my tastes, but 
hey, it was fun. And then for highlighter, she sent me the AOA Studio Wonder Baked Highlighter. I think this is that Shop Miss A, I think. Those are all the products she sent. Those are the products I have to work with. I've already grabbed products from my own collection to kind of fill in any holes that I had. Let's get up close to the camera and start doing my makeup. All right, so we are up close and personal. I put my hair up, I'm hot. But I'm gonna take some Milani eyeshadow primer and just start priming my eyes. So like I mentioned in the beginning, I actually asked on Instagram, I put a little questionnaire thing on Insta stories and asked like, are there any questions you'd like me to ask me or for like me to talk about in a video? The first question was, what made you start your YouTube channel? It's something I had thought about doing for a long time. Now, if you didn't know, um, I originally started a blog and originally way back when it used to be a book blog. And then I think in 2013, my life started to get a lot busier. I wasn't, cause a book blog, I just, I reviewed books and I used to be an avid reader. And then uh, right before I got married, my life started to get a lot busier. I wasn't reading as much. And I knew going in, like when I got married, I knew that was gonna drastically change and I really wouldn't be able to read much, which I mean, I don't read at all now, so there's that. Uh, instead of reading, I do YouTube and blog. But anyway, I knew it was gonna be cut down significantly. I loved blogging though, and so I was like, I really don't wanna lose my blog and just kinda let it go to the dust because I'm not able to review new books. So I was like, what else do I really enjoy that I could kind of include and incorporate into it? And that's why I started playing with other kind of like lifestyle and beauty products and I fell in love with beauty products. I loved reviewing them. I loved trying to do looks and share them on my blog. But anyway, I'm gonna interrupt real quick because I'm gonna be using this palette out and I got a little story to tell you guys. Um, so I didn't realize this when I got it because I just left it in the box. It was, it's, it's been crazy here. I just put everything that Kim had sent me into a basket to then come down and film. So I didn't really look at it, pulled it out of the box that it came in, went to open it on camera I'm gonna go ahead and put the clip in here. This is what happened. Let's see, there's what it looks like really pretty. That's one of the reasons the whole tutorial was a mess because I got black and brown all over my lap. And even though I cleaned it up as best I could, I had black all over my clothes, I had black on my arms, I kept having black on my face throughout the tutorial. It was a hot mess, but I figured I would share that with you because I couldn't believe I caught that on camera. And yeah, that was interesting. So this is what we have to work with. I'm gonna try to do something kind of dramatic. I feel I feel like doing something, I think a half cut crease is what I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna be talking and pointing at the shadows that I use so I don't have to keep interrupting myself. Okay, so where was I? Around 14 or just a little bit before 14, I that's when I really truly kind of started going solely into just doing a makeup, talking about makeup on my blog. And then um, honestly, around right after I got married and I moved out to California with my husband, uh, that's honestly when I kind of thought about doing YouTube. Because at the time I was watching beauty YouTubers because I discovered, um, it was maybe a year or two before that that I started trying to do my makeup and I discovered YouTube and I was watching all these tutorials to learn. And I kind of really wanted to do it, but I just felt like, you know, Katie, you're still learning. You don't know anything. What are you going to talk about? At the time, I, or at least the, the YouTubers I was following at the time, they would do tutorials. They weren't, I found a couple like uh, Emily Noel, she would review products, which is kind of what I wanted to do. But even Emily Noel, like she would do tutorials and stuff like that, or just show how she applies her makeup. And she just she applies her makeup so beautifully. And in 2014, I was like, you're nowhere on that level, Katie. Like you can't. You, you can't have a YouTube channel. So I talked myself out of it and just really focused in on my blog. I got pregnant with Olivia. We moved out to Virginia. It was still kind of in the back of my mind. But then honestly, I discovered Samantha March. Uh, I'll, I'll link, you know, I'm gonna go link a video. I just did the my makeup journey tag and I mentioned her and kind of share my story in there. So if you want to kind of get more information or just hear more of my story, uh, go watch that afterwards and you know get filled in just so I don't take too much time in this video. But Samantha March has a lot to do with why I finally decided to do my YouTube channel because if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I would ever, maybe in another year or two, but definitely not start it when I did. She really, I mean, because I started my channel when I was, I don't know, four or five months pregnant with Gideon. I knew my life was going to be getting crazier, but 
I don't know, something about her personality and just her drive and how, I mean, she's busy. Like, you know, she doesn't have kids, but she is an author. She, she does, she has her hands in a lot of pots and she's able to keep up with the blog and, or YouTube. And that really inspired me. And I was like, you know what, Katie, like, She's doing all these things. You know, you can be a mom, do blog and YouTube. So yeah, all that to say, Samantha March really, truly is uh, is the reason, one of, one of the biggest reasons why I started my channel. Like she gave me the push and the courage to start it. So yeah, I really do owe her a lot. I almost feel like that brown I picked up had some black hidden in there because that looks really dark in comparison to that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that. I thought I cleaned the palette. I cleaned it up as best I could, but evidently I did not see the black still hiding in the brown. Okay, so I'm just going to try to lighten the crease a bit. But next question was, does makeup ever overwhelm you? Yes and no. I would say at the beginning of the year, I kind of really felt overwhelmed. And most for... Well, for one, I was, I'm behind uh, at the beginning of the year and even, you know, last year, I was really behind because having a blog, even though I just started YouTube, I still got a lot of PR because I've had a blog for a while. And when I got pregnant with my son, I honestly like got off just about everything for two, three months. And then I kind of just slowly was getting in. But while I was sick, I was still getting PR. So I just have a lot of kind of like backlog. And I actually just went through and decluttered my new makeup. So all like my PR and stuff I've purchased, I went through and decluttered those drawers. And I have felt so much better since because before that kind of like idea struck me of like, Katie, you don't have to try and review everything that you're sent. You don't have to try and review everything in these drawers because you're never going to catch up. And I went through and decluttered it. I felt so I felt so much better about my makeup and just knowing that like, you know, if I can't get to something, it's just the way it is. Like I can't, I can't keep up with everything basically. And a lot of brands, not a lot of brands, but I have a good number of brands that just send me PR like without any kind of um, agreement or anything that I'm just on their PR list so they just send me stuff I have no control I have no heads up that it's coming and those things those products are kind of I, I've come to the realization or just like I've come to terms with myself like those are optional Katie if you can't review them just put them in a giveaway so you can gift them and bless someone else or give them to your friends give them to your family so ever since I did that and just kind of came to the realization that like it's okay if you don't get to everything that's ever sent to you. Only keep the stuff you want. I felt so, I've, I have felt so much better about things. You know, before I cut the crease, I'm gonna take this red shade right here. Yeah, here, just because I don't think I want my cut crease to come over that far. So anyway, ever since I did that and just kind of come to terms with myself, like you don't have to try everything. You don't have to buy everything, Katie. You know, you can, you can skip over things if you uh, like don't want to review something or don't want to try something that's sent to you. And now I don't know if she was kind of saying like, are you, does it ever stress you out like the makeup I have and like the makeup that I currently have open in my collection and stuff like that, if that stresses me out. And honestly, it doesn't. I know I have a large collection. I know it's totally not necessary. I enjoy being able to go to my makeup and do the shop my stash every month and pick out new products. But anyway, I don't know if any of that made sense, but no, makeup doesn't stress me. The makeup I have in my collection and having such a large collection doesn't stress me out. And now that I've kind of figured out a good system and a good method for receiving PR and stuff from brands, that doesn't stress me out either because that was honestly the only part that really stressed me out was all the new makeup that brands were sending me and feeling like I had to try everything. So I'm really attracted to this Grand Fleet. I, don't, I thought it said pile, but it's like PA. This gold shade right here looks super pretty. But it's a little um creamy. Is that the word I'm looking for? I forget what shade. I think I tried the pink nutcracker in my previous, the when I tried to film it before. And I don't remember it being as, um, not creamy, but almost wet looking. I don't even know if you guys would be able to see if I if I did get up close, but... It's not doing it too bad. I just feel like it m makes the lines in my eyes, like the crevices of my eyes stand out. And not all metallics do that, I feel like. There's just something about this, their, their shimmer formula being so creamy, it just makes it stand out, which if you didn't see, I'm gonna link up here, but I, 
I mentioned Bad Habit in this video about eyeshadow palettes that were made for swatches because Bad Habit, I feel like they're, they're mattes too, but especially their shimmers, they, I felt like, I feel like, oh my gosh, I should have knocked that off. I feel like they made their eyeshadows with the purpose and intent of them looking amazing in the swatch, but because they're so creamy and, you know, they look so nice in the swatch, it's just too much of something, so it makes it hard and just not my favorite formula to work with on the eyes, so. Okay, next question is, what is something that we would never in a million years think to ask you? And then answer it. I'm gonna be so lame because I can't really think of a good question, but I know one thing that always surprises me when I tell people, but um, I tell people I'm from Florida. Like I grew up in Florida, but I was actually born in Alaska polar opposites there, but um, my parents are actually both from Florida, but when my parents got married, my dad was in the military and was stationed in Alaska. So I think I'm gonna take this up a notch. I brought down the Pixie by Petra Glitter as Liquid Fairy Lights. But yeah, I know that, I feel like that's kind of a lame answer because I feel like where were you born is a question that comes up, but I can't think of any other question that no one would think to ask me. So my camera just stopped recording automatically, which means I was recording for at least 25 to 30 minutes. And I'm not even done with my eyes yet. So gotta pick it up, Katie. Um, let me just do liquid liner and I will see if I can think of anything else because I can't talk when I'm doing my liquid liner anyway. All right, so my eyeliner decided to be extremely, extremely distant cousins today, but we're just gonna roll with it and let's all just pretend that they are really close twins and that'd be nice. I could not think of a question that no one would ever think to ask me in a million years. Like, that's a pretty big question. So per usual, I'm gonna stop on my eyes from here and let's do my face. And once again, I did this in the first video. I forgot to spray this before I did my makeup. So you know what? We're just gonna spray it on the bottom half of our face because I don't want it to mess up my eye makeup because it does stay before applying moisturizer. So. Let's see. I feel like Georgia Harris, except I don't have her cool fan. Okay, next question was, what got you interested in makeup? I think I answered this also in the make, uh, My Journey makeup tag that I did. I'll answer a little bit here. The real reason I got into makeup was honestly because I didn't like my acne. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the Murad Skin Perfecting Lotion and then I'm gonna go in with um, Bare, Bare Minerals Blemish Rescue for my primer. But uh, yeah, that was honest to goodness, that is the reason. This feels so weird not doing this with a mirror. I can't hold my mirror. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use the viewfinder. I'm so sorry. I That's like the biggest pet peeve of mine for watching YouTube is when YouTubers um, exclusively look at the viewfinder when they're talking. In doing videos. I know it's kind of weird because like, you know, they're not talking to anyone so they want to look at something and focus on something so I understand why but it bugs me as a viewer because I'm sitting on the other side of the screen like watching their video going like, why aren't you looking at me? Like, look at the camera, look at me, not yourself. But uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, in conversation like day to day if you're going to meet someone, you know, when you are talking with someone and the person just won't look at you, like they look everywhere else but at you. And it, that bugs me so much too. I'm like, you want to look at me? Like we're having a conversation, right? But anyway, I'm just going to put a little bit of that primer on too because I really do like this primer. I feel like it makes my foundation and stuff go on a bit nicer. Um... So honestly, yeah, I started, I feel like I didn't start breaking out with acne too bad um, till about 15. And then I think, I remember thinking when I was like 14 and stuff, like, ooh, like my older siblings are breaking out and stuff, but I still have nice skin and then 15 hit and it was like, ba-boom. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't laughing then. I'm also gonna put this uh, little, Needles No More from Dr. Brandt uh, under my eyes real quick. But yeah, it, it hit pretty bad. Um, I remember trying so many things. My parents were really awesome to try, you know, to get me um, products and um, different products that YouTubers would recommend or that we heard good reviews on to try to see if that would help. And honestly, the thing that ended up working 
and like making a big enough difference and kind of was the start of my skin looking better and getting better was a product from acne.com like that was the brand name and it's like a three step three step system like a cleanser a uh moisture what was a cleanser a treatment and a moisturizer and it was just the the regimen and like success was very focusing on jojoba oil if i remember correctly and focusing on minimal skincare and that's what really turned the corner for me as far as acne but anyway that's when i got i started getting invested into makeup and i started selling avon and uh, there's something else most people don't know i started selling avon because um i couldn't afford makeup so i wanted to sell it so that one i could get the discount on makeup i'm just going in with this this and this we're having a whole cocktail today you got a discount if you sold makeup or you know sold Avon so that was nice and then selling Avon any money that I made from that that's what I used to buy makeup with that was the reason I sold makeup was to buy makeup so I sold makeup for several years I feel like at least two I don't know how much of this stuff to put Ooh, it's thick Avon really kind of got my foot in the door majorly obviously because they sold all sorts of kind of makeup but i remember avon used to sell these little quads and they were colored quads and they were color quads so they had a green quad a red quad those kind of things and i think i bought every one of them and i that's honestly where my love for eyeshadow began because i thought that creating an eye look all with you know greens the green was my favorite See, my love for green started even way back when. Um, creating, you know, uh, I look with all greens or all blues, all reds, all neutrals. Oh, it was just so much fun. And I loved learning how, like, I would watch YouTube videos to learn where to put what shadow, that kind of thing. I feel like this is looking too dark. I look too bad on camera, but I'm adding more of the skin tint because that's a lighter shade. That's where the love started. Um... Acne kind of spurred it on, but then uh, when I started selling it and when I got those quads, I was like, this is fun. I almost feel like I just did a bad cocktail with too much of that NYX mixer in here because this looks a little splotchy almost. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, whereas this side doesn't look as bad. But we're going to call that good and just move on. Anyway, oh, I forgot. Oh, man, I wanted to use my favorite concealer tonight. Don't ask me why. But I forgot it's extremely light for me, so I'm going to go in with the NYX HD. I'm testing this out uh, just to see if it's a dupe for the Urban Decay. So far, I feel like it's not, because I just feel like it's not as pigmented and opaque as the Urban Decay. But anyway, let's get another question. What is a food that everyone loves but you hate? Oh, I remember this question, and I remember thinking, you really need to think of that, Katie, because... Oh, I have one. Shrimp. And I know not everyone loves but I know I feel like a good number of people love shrimp I've eaten it once in my life and the one time I ate it my grandmother made it she made mini shrimp so I don't even know if that's something different but they look like shrimp but they were just super tiny and she made it for dinner one night and I remember I don't even know how old I was I was young like eight nine ten something like that but I remember my mom and dad saying like, your grandmother made that for you, you're gonna eat it and you have to eat it all. And I remember biting it and just like feeling the crunch and like almost gagging cause I don't know, something about those little creatures weirded me out. And at that age, it just kind of slightly traumatized me. So now that I'm grown up, my husband loves shrimp, but just the thought of like, there's. There's no desire in me to put it to my mouth, put it that way. Like there's nothing in me that wants to eat shrimp. Also avocado. I will eat avocado if it's like in a guacamole, but the texture of avocado, my husband and daughter love to just eat it with a spoon right out of the shell. And just something about the texture of avocado and thinking to eat it like that, where it's kind of hard, but still soft, it, it grosses me out. So I don't like that either. All right, next question is top three bucket list items not related to YouTube. Ooh, top three bucket list. Um, I'd like to go on a cruise. I was actually talking with one of y'all on um, in the comments of one of my videos, one of the travel me videos. I think is it Valerie? Yes, it was Valerie. Um, she she left a comment on one of my pack with me videos, and we got to talking, and she talked about a cruise, and I was like, oh, that's I, I would really like to go on a cruise. I think it'd be fun. My husband's a doctor, so he's just kind of like, oh my gosh, germs. But 
Oh my gosh, you get germs. My thing is like you get germs everywhere. I know it's it's probably a lot worse. And depending on the cruise, I bet, you know, I don't know. Maybe if you don't go anywhere too crazy or have, I don't know. I would like to go on a cruise, put it that way. Bucket list, this one will kind of sound lame, but get back to Florida. That is definitely on my bucket list. Um, I, as I already mentioned this video, I was raised in Florida, all my family. I've got nine other siblings um, and a bunch of nieces and nephews. They are all still in Florida and I am in Virginia and who knows where after this. My husband's in the military if you're curious. So, or and even like for a bucket list, like not even get back to Florida because we are still in the military. So you just, you move around every couple of years. So even if next year we end up moving back to Florida, two, three years from there, we don't know. So my bucket list is not just getting back to Florida, but moving and officially moving and planting down in Florida. So like after the military life, when we buy a home and buy a home to not move again, I want it to be in Florida and that's on my bucket list because when that happens, I'm gonna be so excited. I'm gonna use this for my contour and bronzing. So that's two and then three, Ooh, this is dark. I grabbed the darkest shade in that palette. I don't even know what I would pick for three. I'm not a really adventurous person. Like I don't like to like, there's not things I'd like to go and see. I guess third would it'd be neat to visit some other country. Um, I think it'd be neat to go over to South Korea where my husband's from. So I guess for a bucket list for my third one is just to go out of the United States. Cause honestly, I'm such a chill person. Like I have no desire or like, all these places I wanna see, but I think it would be neat to just go and visit another country. For blush, I'm gonna take the Burt's Bees in Bear Peach. Okay, we're going in with the highlighter. Let me grab another question before we do this. Uh, next question was, do you want any more kids? Um, yes. Did I even tell you this is in the shade Cupcake, the highlighter? Uh, yes, definitely, absolutely want more kids. Um, my husband and I both want a lot of kids and whenever people ask me like I had someone recently ask me like how many do you see like is there a number you have of like how many you want like I know you want a lot but like how many don't you have a number and I really don't like <laughs> I'm, I think it'd be awesome to have four I think it'd be awesome to have 10 I think it'd be awesome to have 12 I there's really no number in my head I think that's a pretty highlight right you guys can see that Let's do some lashes. I'm so scared. Let's see how this goes. This is what they look like. So I'm gonna answer the question and just put some lash glue on and wait for them to dry. But um, I really don't have a set number for kids. We definitely want more. Um, we want more of our own kids and like, you know, to conceive, but also we want to adopt. My husband was adopted himself. But another reason we want to adopt is just because of the, um, a really good like visual representation of what Christ does for us when you adopt a child they become part of your family and you fully adopt them as if they were your own child as if you birthed them and in the same way that's what Christ does for us when he saves when he saves us he adopts us to into his family that's something that is very close to both of us and so that's something we definitely want to to do at some point that answers that question we definitely want more kids and i mean for me personally like i am most comfortable when i have kids if that doesn't sound weird like i was thinking about the other day and i remember when i first got married and the first time we like went out and did something like went to a, a party with some friends or went to the church or something. The first couple of times we were going out and doing things as a married couple, it was the weirdest thing and the hardest thing. Ugh, I feel ridiculous, but it was the weirdest thing and the hardest thing for me to be somewhere and not have a child to take care of. Like I am most comfortable in conversation when I can be holding a child. I love having children. Don't, don't like being pregnant at all, at all. Hate it actually but I love having kids. Oh my gosh, so that record, stop recording again. That means I've been recording for an hour. I apologize if this video is 45 minutes long. I'm gonna try to keep it to 30 minutes, but I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I've been talking so much, but I feel like I have a visor on both of my lashes. 
What do you think of my lashes? Comment down below. And it better not just be ha ha ha. Oh, this is the Jordana Fabuliner. We're just gonna speed through this. These lashes are so long, this inside part touches my nose every time I blink. Like I feel it right in there. Um, okay, so we are going to put that down and finish up the lower lash line. Um, I'm gonna use this uh, uh, one from Urban Decay, the gold. Um, what are your favorite brands of each category? For f So I'm just gonna go kind of like eyes, face, lashes, that kind of thing. For lashes, I really like Salon Perfect. I feel like nobody really talks about Salon Perfect, but I find their lashes really pretty and very easy to apply. Eyeshadow, I love the Lorac formula, but if I'm wanting very colorful, um, Juvia's Place is really nice. Let's just go use something different, this ballet slipper, and then I'll put a little bit of that shade in the outer, you know, the outer corner to smoke it out. For face products, um, actually primer, I'm not super loyal to, but I'm really loving this, um, the one I used today, the uh, Bare Minerals. That is really nice, and I've kind of been loving it. Um, foundation though, I honestly, when I think of foundation, oh my gosh, um, that I'm most intrigued at, honestly, is Makeup Forever. I think I, at this point, with that skin tint included, I own three of Makeup Forever's foundations and, like, face products, and I'm really eyeing that new one, the, the, like, Demi Matte or whatever. I forget what it's called, Soft Matte. I really want to get that one, and that was the one I was going to get during the Sephora sale that I never did. I really also like Urban Decay. Their face products are really good. Highlight, I love the Lorac highlights. I'm just going to take this gold shade here, I can be in frame, use that as my inner corner. Mascara, I'm honestly not super loyal to, but if I had to pick one brand, I'd say Maybelline. So I think that answered the question. I feel like I made it a lot shorter than it could have been, but we're nearing the end of this, so I think I still got one or two questions, so I'm trying not to make it too long. My battery is flashing. Better hurry. Oh, what's a typical day like for you? That's a good question. I'm gonna use this red. It's uh, NARS's Star Woman. Um, typical day starts for me at 6.30. I get up and I get the kids up at seven. So before that, I usually get my coffee. How am I supposed to answer a question putting lipstick on? Okay, worst application of red lipstick ever, but can't be bothered. Um, so get up at 6.30, I get the kids up at seven. I usually feed Gideon while Olivia plays and I finish my coffee. Then we do breakfast at eight. Nine o'clock, we, a little bit before nine, we head upstairs. Gideon goes down to bed for his first nap at nine and that's when I get ready in the morning. And then I'll get ready and then just do think, play with Olivia, um, get things ready for the day. Usually we gotta run errands and stuff, I'll do that. And then he wakes up around 10, 10.30, get up and feed him. We do our errands or you know, if we're going to visit someone, if we're going on a play date, if we're going to the zoo, we usually do that then. And then I try to make sure I'm back home by 12, 12.30 to do lunch, put the kids down to bed for a nap by one. Usually uh, that's when typically I either film or edit, so as soon as the kid goes down for bed, that's when I get on it and I work until Gideon wakes up. He always wakes up first. I feed him, I play with him, and then Olivia gets up between three and four and we just hang around the house. Sometimes we'll go to the park or the library because both are within two minutes from my house. Um, so we'll do one of those, hang out, maybe clean the house, um, just spend time together playing, honestly. Um, Gideon has another nap at five, so he'll go down for that. And usually Olivia likes to cook with me, that kind of thing, um, in the evening. And then we eat dinner around five, six, I don't know, it's always different. And uh, usually my husband comes home between six and seven. So uh, as soon as he comes home after dinner, it's playtime with daddy. I get some things done around the house, like cleaning the kitchen and you know straightening up, trying to get things calmed down for the night, clean up as much as I can. And then eight o'clock is bedtime for both kids. We go upstairs and put them to bed. And then uh, we have our routine and all that, and then I come downstairs and I clean up. I try to clean up the house, not clean, 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 but I try to put all their toys away so that the next night, and the next day when they come out, they have like a whole new adventure with all their toys put back that they can now take out and destroy throughout the day. So I do that, and I usually finish up around nine nine thirty, 
And then I work, I try to work on blog or YouTube for about an hour, hour and a half. Usually um, my bedtime, I try to do it around 10.30. 10.30 is usually when I'm like, okay, Katie, put, put the computer away, head upstairs, and I'm in bed. Try to be in bed by 11. Sometimes that doesn't work out, but that, that's my goal. And then Gideon at this point still wakes up at least once, if not more times at night. So I'm always awakened at some point after that. And then the day starts anew at 6.30. So that is my day. Okay, last question I'm going to answer. I'm so sorry I did not get to this. Do you find blogging tough lately? Blogs used to be the thing, but it seems harder and harder to drive traffic. I totally agree with that. Blogging is hard, but I don't think it is totally dead because where YouTube is very social and like people like to get to know the person behind or you know who runs the channel as well as like reviews and stuff like that. I feel like blogs are very much like business oriented. Like people go there to read to read what they have to say, to read the review and then kind of move on. The people don't really comment on blogs anymore because I feel like they see it more as like, a, I'm going to this website to get information, whereas you go to YouTube to kind of get information but socialize too. So I think blog, and that's what blogs used to be, but I think blogs have just changed to be more of a website, which I mean, a lot of blogs, you gotta admit, aren't really like that homey feeling. They're very much look like a professional website. So I think it's just, it's just different. You can still drive traffic and like I still, I do a sponsorships on my blog so I'm still able to get sponsorships. I haven't done one on YouTube yet because I'm still pretty small. But for my blog it's much more established so I'm still able to get sponsorships so that is still nice and encouraging to know that that's still there and that's not totally dead. But yeah, I think it's just very different and it's just a different viewpoint and for me, Pinterest is where a lot of my traffic comes from. I always make sure that uh, I make really good images for Pinterest and people like to look at visual things on Pinterest and then click through to read or get more information. So yeah, that answers that. Let's zoom out, close out this video. Oh my gosh, you guys are troopers. I can't believe that this turned out to be so long, but I really just wanted to sit down and chill and chit chat with you guys. So if you made it to the end of this video, Thank you so much. I truly do appreciate it. And let me know down below, would you like me to do get readies with me's a little more frequently? I'm not thinking too frequent, but maybe like once a month, once every other month. I do kind of like just being able to sit down, chill, maybe ask on Instagram any questions you want me to answer. I really did enjoy it. And I think I will do this setup from now on if I do get ready with me's and just do it at night after the kids are in bed. It's a lot less stressful for me at least, but maybe it's not so good because then they end up being 20 hours long. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know what you think of these lashes down in the comments. I feel like I don't even look like myself. Like I keep catching myself in the viewfinder and I'm just like, who is that? But yeah, that's going to wrap up this video. Definitely make sure you guys go check out Kim, Lauren, Maria, and Stephanie. I will have all their links down below. Please go watch them and check out what looks that they create with the products sent to them. See who got sent what box. And I definitely think you will love all these ladies. All these ladies, like I said, I've been watching for a while. Kim, as I've already said, is newer, but I really enjoy their content. They're just really uplifting and upbeat ladies that are super sweet. I really trust their reviews. I love the content that they bring out. And yeah, I think you guys will love them. So definitely please check them out. And if you are coming over from any of their channels, thank you so much for coming over. No, this is not the typical length of my videos, but yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up. I feel like I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys.